Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live. There is no such thing as too late to build connection, even in damaged relationships. Are you watching my videos and thinking to yourself, it's too late for me and my kid. I've already damaged the relationship and there is no way to get connection again. You're not alone. Many caregivers have felt the same way. Some of those caregivers and parents gave up on the relationship. Others gave into the despair, and some found a way to repair the relationship and build connection. Relationship repair can be used to build connection where maybe there is none left. Give me the next five minutes and I'll give you a crash course on repairing the relationship with your child. If you'd like to see my longer video on connection and my parenting method called Cubed, that gets into how my clients and I end the yelling, arguing, and fighting through building and maintaining strong connections with our kids, comment hashtag connection below and I'll get you that link ASAP. My name is Matt Kenyon and I am a family relationship coach and the owner of Free Thought Coaching, where I help parents end the yelling, arguing, and fighting and build happily integrated families. My promise is that there is always at least one strategy, tool, tip, or piece of advice that you can use right after watching my video. Quote, the relationship is more important than the break, whatever it was. This quote from Jonathan Balin and Daniel A. Hughes in their book, The Neurobiology of Attachment Focused Therapy, is really kind of spells out the importance of this here. Because without repair, the child will likely see ruptures in the relationship as either untrustworthiness on the part of the parent, unworthiness on the part of the child, or both. Some parents make the mistake of thinking that if they dis diminish the rupture or give explanations, they reduce the impact that that rupture has on their relationship. Ironically, Discounting or dismissing the rupture or attending to rationalize it away frequently causes further rupture and intensifies the negative effects of the initial rupture. It's okay though. First, remember it's not your fault. These are learned things that you picked up from other people. Second, have compassion for yourself. It's okay. Another great quote that I find is applicable here comes from Daniel J. Siegel in his book, Pocket Guide to Interpersonal Neurobiology. And when talking about repair in the child and parent relationship, he talks about, quote, it's not my fault, but it is my responsibility. By acknowledging your mistakes and making necessary changes to your behavior, you, as the parent, can take the rupture in the relationship and turn it into an opportunity to actually improve the relationship you have with the child, sometimes even beyond where it was before. By taking responsibility for the rupture, the parent turns the situation into a trust building opportunity. Way to practice this is that self-care and compassion is key to learning how to repair with others. Taking time to practice empathy, compassion, and understanding for yourself in order to get better at re repairing relationships with others is something that I always recommend to my clients and practice myself. It's important that you, the parent, initiate the repair to show that the relationship is important to you and that you are dedicated to maintaining and resolving ruptures in the relationship no matter how they occur. Frequently, children, children need the parent to initiate repair before they can even begin to recover from the rupture. Don't get discouraged if you're not met with immediate positive change. Regular repairs teach the child's brain that the relationship is safe and that you can be relied upon as a source of comfort and joy. The positive change and repair will come if you just stick to it. For many parents, shame gets in the way of repair. Shame of disconnection and failure, shame of the initial rupture even happening at all. We know that feelings of shame, anger, frustration, and guilt, which frequently come up during ruptures in relationships, 
can shut down our prefrontal cortex and leave us with only emotional responses available to us. In this state, we don't have the ability to be present in the moment and focus on the repair. It's better to take a break and step away. The process of repair starts with being in the present moment and acceptance, with acceptance and non-judgment of the feelings and actions that led to the rupture. Mindfulness practices can be a great way to start the journey of building the skills needed to effectively repair ruptures in your relationships by focusing on repairing your relationship with yourself. All right, so the basic steps to repair are as follows. Acknowledge without judgment the child's experience. Empathize with them and their experience, their thoughts and their feelings. Seek understanding through curiosity by asking questions about how it was for them. Make a commitment to be clearer next time with your intention or make whatever needed changes are necessary. And then finally, express your desire to help the child and to repair the relationship and then follow through. Empathy, part of my bigger cubed method is the key piece that helps children trust again. More than any explanation of the actions that initially caused the distress or rupture. I've said it before, and it is never more true than when attempting to repair relationships. Empathy is the superpower of relationships. If you'd like to see my longer video on connection, repair, empathy, and my parenting method called Cubed that gets into how my clients and I build and maintain strong connections and relationships with our kids, comment hashtag connection below, and I'll get you that link right away. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and happy parenting.